Alright, you guys got here a 25 horsepower Mercury. I got this thing a little over a year ago. I had problems with it when I first got it. I'll tell you about those and what we did to kind of remedy that or at least try to. And I'll tell you about some of the new problems we're having on it here. Let me give you a look at this motor. What I've had is it'll crank up, it'll crank right up, and then it'll die. Or if it dies, it doesn't want to crank again. I'll get it cranked, you gotta come in here, gas it up a little bit, get it going. Well, I thought, well, we got a fuel problem. Maybe it's in the tank, I don't know. I said, to change the bulb. I talked to a buddy, he said, make sure you go get this good blue line. Well, it already had that on there. The bulb, bulb I thought was already working good, but I went in and changed it, made sure the lines were clean. Bulb stays, you know, it'll get hard, stay hard. Well, it started losing power, lost a lot of power. And I got to read, I thought, well, maybe bearings, I read something about prop. <sighs> bearings and prop, which didn't make much sense because I don't know why they would think there'd be bearings in a prop. Went ahead and pulled that off yesterday, replaced it. But as you can see, the old prop's kind of jacked up in its own right. Well, I looked down in there, seals look good. So, I went ahead and changed the oil in the lower unit. When I first got it, pulled the foot off and uh, replaced the impeller. I don't want to do some basic things. Change the fuel filter. There was also a couple of pieces missing. Uh, again, the, I guess, drive shaft. And I got all that fixed up. So, what we're going to do now is go through and kind of troubleshoot and see what we can see. I'm hearing a lot of stuff about the power pack, stator. Of course, everybody's going to say your carb's dirty. But you'll notice, I, I didn't notice this when I got it. It's missing the little breather cover there. And on the bottom, another thing I noticed, they got this, it's a plastic, plastic nut. And it's actually, I think, supposed to have another one goes on top of that which now looking at it don't make much sense on this one as there is not enough room to thread anything over there so but what it's doing it, it just it's not getting any power it, the motor is not revving up when i first started having this problem the motor was revving up good and it just wasn't getting any power. That's why I thought, well, you know, the prop's not spinning the way it needs to be. And on started down that route, well, yesterday, got all that replaced. And then I'm not getting, it just feels like it's not getting gas. Uh, it's just losing power in it. it and I got another weird thing. I say it, it'll start on the first try. But then after that, it's an act of God to get the thing to start. So let's go through and just kind of take you guys through what I do. And hopefully by the end of this, hell, it might be weeks, we'll uh, have figured out a little bit more about these motors and have this sucker purring. I figure we start by looking different electrical connections, see if there's any wires we notice that are obviously frayed, grounding out. These wires right here, I mean, that doesn't look too promising or great let's see they're kind of looks like they've been rubbing on something these connections seem good probably could use a little cleaning off you follow those down through here let's see here oh, that's looking okay I'll come over here this is gonna be a little solenoid start the engine tell y'all what i'm just gonna also kind of look around it should be oh wow look at here there's something i didn't even notice that that plug wire is covered in electrical tape that could be an issue so all right here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead I'm going to dig around on this a little bit. We're going to go get a spark plug wrench too. Like I said, I replaced the plugs last year, so it be a good time to check them. That ought to tell us a little bit about how the engine's been running. And we'll go from there. So we got a plug wrench. Now, this is not really one you want to use for a plug wrench. I uh, couldn't find my one in the proper size that fit it. What you really want something more like this. It's going to have a little cushioning in there for the uh, help 
and sure you don't break that ceramic, which is something I did as a child. But let's just go ahead here and pull one of these plugs and pull both of them and see what they're going to tell us. All right. I just broke that one loose. And there, I broke that one loose. Let's see here. And here we go. Well, look at that. We got a little bit of what looks like shavings on the plug there. Doesn't look too burnt up. I am curious to know what that little piece of garbage on there is. Here's the other one right here. That, you can tell, looks like maybe it's been running pretty lean. I might have to Google the meaning of that there. But you can see, let's go look at them kind of side by side here. One on the bottom there is from the top cylinder. And one on the top is from the bottom cylinder. And the one on the top almost looks like that cylinder is not getting what it needs to operate. I don't, I don't hope. There, that, that cylinder's been getting the oil it needs. It's of course, pre-mixed with the gas. And it's very important to keeping that cylinder integrity intact. So let's just hope that, that the problem is not with the getting fuel to that cylinder. So we did just go through a little troubleshooting here. Now this plug came out of the top. Looks like it's been running. I'm say I'm no no outboard genius here, but I'd say it looks like it's been running a little lean. And this plug, you know, this is the one with those deposits on it. Well, here's what I did. I took one plug, put it here, grounded it, and just kind of bumped the engine. The one that was in the top was giving me spark. Put the, well, this one was in the top here. This was giving me spark. I took the other one, put it in the bottom where it was, connected this plug wire, and it wasn't giving me any spark. Well, I swapped it up here to the top. I made sure it was good and seated. I did do that. Moved it up to this top janky looking sucker, and it was indeed giving spark. So now that's making me think this ignition coil might have a problem. Another thing I noticed while I was doing that is that I would have spark jumping out of this sucker and grounding, you know, just finding a way to ground. So I think we're gonna at least start with a multi sort of approach here. And that one, I'm going to get new plugs because they're cheap and you may as well. I'm gonna test this ignition coil that I think's bad. Uh, it could be the plug wire, and I'm also going to go ahead and get new plug wires, especially since one has the electrical tape over the boot that's been torn. So that's what we're going to do, and we'll check back. Off. I did have some dielectric grease up there just from when he replaced it. Went ahead and put it on the multimeter, checked ohms, continuity, uh, all red good, zero or 0 0.01 ohms, and had a continuity check and I double checked it again on the ignition coil here and nothing. So we're about to pull that ignition coil off and kind of go from there. One thing that I'm about to do that is always good to do is take pictures of this thing because you're going to need to remember how to put it back together when you finally get your parts in. And, you know, that always might take a little bit. So now we're testing the coil here. It's kind of hard holding it on there. Uh, we're normally seeing, uh, see it's showing zero right now. We're normally seeing 0 0.1, 0 0.2. What you're looking there, I think, is a 0.2. And this is an auto range in meter, but I think that's looking for about 200 ohms. And you also want to check between the inside the coil there. And we're getting about point. 867 kilo ohms, 867 ohms. So that is within the range on this coil. Uh, now I took the coil little cover off here and kind of inspecting the cracks, chips, 
things of that nature, and I'm not seeing any. Which tells me this coil should be testing good. So now we got to figure out where we're going from there. All right, now we check that ignition coil, which that's that's what I was thinking it was going to be. If it's not getting sparked, the air ignition coil is going to be the first thing I'm going to check. And of course, you know, if it's a good spark plug, and we tested that. So then I decided, well, I'll go ahead and check these these wires on here. Let's see if we can get you a little view of them. These wires here. So we'll check continuity, traced it back, and I decided I'd go ahead and run the other wire back, and I think we found our culprit. And then coming back right through here bam looks like this has had a little collision with the teeth and i do believe that that right there is our culprit so we're going to splice those wires together and see where that gets us all right well we've got the wire stripped over here um now i'll show you what we got ended up having to take the power pack here off to kind of get to that wire we got them stripped and of course could do like a normal person and use a butt connector but that's not really my style so i figure while the soldering iron's heating up i'm gonna sit here and have a little talk about other things we found in here I had a couple wires uh you know kind of going up to the stator there that weren't too well anchored so we got that taken care of kind of inspected everything else make sure we didn't have any other wires frays or tears now a lot of people definitely would say, you know, go with the butt connector. I've never been too big a fan of them. It's soldering for me. And then I, people, oh, how to solder? And there's probably a lot of you out there thinking, you know, come on, man, it's the easiest thing ever. And I'm, I don't tell you it is. Uh, you just want to take, we're going to tend these tips here, which that means I'm going to take my, take my solder. And kind of hold it right on the end, kind of let a little solder flow in each one kind of wrap them up and then i'm going to drain i'm going to flow some solder all over and we're using a rosin core of course and i put a little extra heat shrink on here this is actually double layered in there you just can't see the other one we're going to slide the heat shrink over it shrink it down slap this power pack on and we're going to go test this puppy out all right well we got it soldered up got our heat shrink on here i'm going to put this little cable deal on there all uh, right I was going to put some electrical tape on it, but you know, that's just going to come off. It really is. And this isn't really meant to stand up to high temperatures, but high enough, it's actually came with a 3D printer. So I think it'll be good. And we'll kind of zip tie these things down, get everything put back together, put our plugs back in, figure out something to do with this boot. That's going to get replaced. But today for testing purposes, we're going to run it and we'll see where we go. <laughs> I'd say we found and fixed the problem. Hopefully this helps some of you guys out. Just use your basic troubleshoot, go down the list, check your spark, check your fuel. That's two things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a proper air fuel mixture, fuel get into the engine, and you're gonna need spark. Let's do it, baby.